Meet the Whiskers. Flower, the leader of the group. Zephod, her partner. Yosarian, with some social problems. Mozart, the caring one. Tosca, the rebellious one. Courageous little Shakespeare. And the naughty kids. Welcome to Meerkat Manor. Good non-discretionary time of day and welcome to my little corner of the internet. This is about as close as I can stomach to get to reality television. And I'm a little worried because I loved the experience the show offered. I'm not sure what that says about me or my natural affinity to reality television, but either way, I would like to talk to you today about Meerkat Manor. few important notes, I watched the UK version as it's the original version uh, narrated by Bill Nighy just because it didn't have as many commercial breaks as the US version and the US version also changed a lot of uh, irritatingly small details. Some meerkats names to pay tribute to stars or maybe avoid copyright situations as well as remove a lot of breeding scenes which whatever but for an educational show conducted by university to learn more about meerkat life leaving out like one of the driving factors for animals to live seems strange lucky for us as of the uk version is the one that just so happens to be free with amazon prime before we get into this i would like to say i don't plan on spoiling too much of the outcome of the show so feel free knowing if you wanted to watch it you still can without any gripping outcomes being revealed however i will talk about some plot points and characters so if you want to truly experience the big brother of the kalahari desert please do my viewer retention stat favor and just mute this video and uh, let it finish in the background and go watch the whole series for yourself it's four seasons of about 13 episodes each and well worth the time in my opinion. Also, don't do too much uh, more research elsewhere either as every article I have found uh, to cross check my writing uh, completely spoils a major, major plot point. So look out for that or avoid looking out for that. The first real barrier to entry to this series is the simple fact it's not very binge friendly. While it is possible, I know I did it. Uh, it's kind of what I do. <laughs> the narrator often reiterates the same meerkat facts, trivia, and story elements we heard in the previous episode. And it can get a little grating over a few hours of watching. I am willing to forgive this as it was aired on primetime Animal Planet in 2005, so the traditional audience were likely either coming across the show for the first time, or likely were not paying attention on their previous viewing and it's hard to really knock someone for not seeing how incredibly drastic the uh, future of video would change in 15 years. But I think the optimal viewing for this show is like one to two, three episodes a day, and then give your brain a chance to refresh. Here are a few fun meerkat facts that if you watch the show, you will for sure have uh, drilled into your brain. Meerkats get a majority of their moisture from their food. A meerkat puppy is only the six dominant centimeters female of a group tall. reserves the right to meerkats, meerkats are far-sighted and have visions. We are recording them day and night. night. Flowers we are recording, recording them day and night. We are recording them day and night. One strange artistic liberty that the creators of the show made was to constantly reference the fact that we are watching something that they recorded. All of the scene in and out transitions are done with panning shots of the cameras used to record the meerkats. And it's usually hilariously in this like golden hour filter. You can't convince me with any filter that this undying cold all seeing collection of glass metal and plastic fits in with the nature docuseries vibe of the show. It's so strange to me. I can understand maybe referencing the university researchers every once in a while because it is cool to see why they're out there and how they are collecting their data, especially with this show and how calm and relaxed the meerkats are with the researchers. It's incredible to watch and it's something a lot of Animal Planet shows do dedicate a few episodes to. It's cool to learn and is awe-inspiring to young minds. 12 year old me when my grandma would bring home the tape she made of Crocodile Hunter, the making of episodes were always my favorite. But the decision to interweave it into the rest of the show comes off to me at least as a constant and strange fourth wall break that takes me out of the show every 10 minutes.
Hopefully that is something they will be able to rectify as they are bringing the show back next year, baby. Fuck yeah, I'm usually not for reboots of older TV shows that can serve as classic uh, time capsules of a certain period. Everything about Meerkat Manor is so 2005 to 2009, it's timeless and it can stand on its own. But I am actually really excited about the show returning according to Reality Blurred, a website sounding eerily like a parody page. Uh, dedicated to reality TV has an article about the show's return stating that BBC has ordered 13 30 minute episode and the current working title is Meerkat Manor Rise of a Dynasty. It is a short article I will leave a link below but uh, be wary it does reveal some of those spoilers I mentioned earlier. Let me know how you guys feel about spoilers uh, in the comments, please. I'm actually curious because I've seen some comments about how they would rather I explain how some things end and how usually the comments will have a few discussions about the ending anyways. But at the same time, I don't want to ruin the experience for people just trying to find out more about a series. And also, I'd like to make the videos a little more engaging for you guys by like actually asking questions for you guys to participate with but have them also be relevant to the video. If it works out, I'll try to hand out more questions so there is actually something in each video to engage with. Sorry, went off on a bit of a tangent there. Anyways, I do think the show is surprisingly successful in being educational. Like, I learned a lot about meerkats while watching. Uh, for instance, in the second episode of the second season, Half of the Whiskers family are being charged by another large group of meerkats and during the charge I noticed the charging group weren't uh, kicking their feet doing the war dance like the narrator says in every confrontation we see and it turns out it was just another half of the family. They just weren't uh, sure until they got close enough to one another. There are a few other moments where you the viewer are picking up on their behaviors and mannerisms and the narrator confirms your suspicions. That particular one was just a standout one for me and it was a moment where I felt, holy shit, I, I learned something from the show. I probably won't be able to use that knowledge ever as it's specific to that exact scenario of knowing if shit is going to go down between two groups of charging meerkats. But I did learn something and I think that excitement is what most Animal Planet shows are trying to achieve. Meerkat Manor is a fun little campy show that is going to appeal to the whole family except your angsty teen. It's educational, funny, and a docu-series that does a good job at imitating uh, modern at the time reality television. And I think in the midst of all of this serious art full of heavy themes and melodrama, it's nice to have a palate cleanser that just requires you to have fun, unlike our next art discussion. But that's enough foreshadowing, let's hop over to YouTube Corner and you guys can get on to your next class. A smaller YouTuber I really enjoy is Tan Valley Productions. I may be a bit biased because he is my roommate, but beyond that he makes really good content. His videos are about pop culture in general, however he has had a recent focus on Pokemon related content and did a series designing his own Pokemon region. His content takes a very simple idea or question related to pop culture and explores the many facets of that idea. For example, his rise to fame, the problem with Pokemon starter designs, where he explores Game Freak's recent trend of characterizing Pokemon personalities which removes the player's ability to imagine an exclusive personality unique to their own starter. My personal recommendations of his are how Nintendo should bring back Woohoo Island, the aforementioned problem with Pokemon starter design video, and the true meaning of Animal Crossing. If you also want some more video essay style content, come check out my channel. I talk about video games, TV, and movies, and explore smaller questions of these larger properties. Carlos from the Lazio line.